altars where you meet us. Take me there, take me there. If what you need is just an offering, it's right here. My life is here, and I'll be a living sacrifice for you. You're a fire. Hello everyone, this is Connie, it is 5 o'clock, and this is Proverbs 31 Woman. I am so low tonight, uh, Rachel is having some car problems, and hopefully she will get in here soon. But you are listening to WCC 99.9 FM in Wilson, South Carolina. Thank you for joining with us. I appreciate every time you ride along with us. I am going to do the disclaimer which is anything that I say or any of my guests that hopefully will arrive soon that is our thoughts and opinions and not the thoughts and opinions of the owners or the sponsors of the radio station. So if you have any problem, please just email me at Proverbs31woman999 at gmail.com or leave a comment in the feed so that I can get back with you. I would love to hear from you. Now tonight I am going to start. We are going to discuss 
time to digest for our bodies. But before I do that, I want to read the guided prayer. Dear Lord, thank you for the mornings. I am so grateful for the constant reminder that each day is a chance to start fresh. Each day is a brand new day with no mistakes in it. Thank you for reminding us in your word that your compassions are new every morning. You never run out of grace, mercy, or forgiveness. Your love never fails. I confess my tendency to put my trust in all the wrong places. Some trust in chariots and some in horses. Sometimes I put my trust in my husband, my education, my accomplishments, or my possessions. But you alone are trustworthy. Today I choose to put my trust entirely in you. Holy Spirit, show me the way I should go. Help me to make good decisions today and every day. To you, O oh Lord, I lift up my soul. I offer you my mind, my will, and my emotions. I submit my every thought, action, and feeling to your Lordship. You're in charge of my life. I long for you. I trust you. Thank you for being so easy to trust. Amen. You know, we as humans, a lot of times, we forget who is the author of our lives. We forget who is the one that is in charge. And we do start to say, hey, you know, I've gone to school, I have a degree, I've got all this under control when the control belongs to the Lord. A good example of that tonight is I am flying solo and I'm going to be honest with you, I am very uneasy about it. I am depending and have been dependent on Rachel to say, Connie, this is what you need to do, Connie. Go over here, switch this, Connie cut this down, Connie cut this off. I have never depended on my own ability to do this. So Father, I just ask you tonight, I need your ability, God. I need the ability that you have given me to be able to fly by the seat of my pants tonight. But God, I'm not really flying by the seat of my pants because you are in control. So, Lord, I just thank you. I thank you for each of our listeners. I thank you that you are always with me. I thank you, God, that all I have to do is say, Father, I need you, and you are here. So, Father, I ask you tonight, as our listeners have joined us, God, that you just fill them with that understanding that I'm not alone. I'm not by myself that my father is with me and I can do all things through my father who strengthens me. So tonight it may be a little rocky or it may go smoothly, but I'm going to give it my best effort. So we have been learning how to strengthen our bodies and I have been using as part of the teaching, becoming the woman that God wants me to be by Donna Parte. Now, as I stated when we first started, I thought this was going to be different than it actually is. This is more about things that I really didn't want to face, which is probably why I need to be teaching this book. I don't want to talk about controlling my weight. I don't want to talk about drinking more water. I don't want to talk about um, getting enough sleep, not watching TV in the bed at night. There's a lot of things that I realize that I need to change. That maybe what Connie thought was best for Connie is not what Connie needed at all. So tonight, as we, as we start on our lesson tonight, from last week, we talked about the importance of drinking water. How water purifies our system. 
how the sugary drinks, the colas, the teas, all that, it's not good for us. And if we really want to have a healthy body, then we, are, we need to get enough water into our system. We also learned that if we put a little lemon water or a little lemon into our water, that lemon has a antiseptic effect on our bodies. That it helps detoxify our liver. That it aids our lymphatic system. That it does make the water taste a little different. But that it aids our bodies. It aids in it even going to the bathroom. Drinking the, the lemon water even aids in that. So there is a medicinal effect as well as getting the water that our bodies require. Well, this week we're going to switch it up a little bit. We're going to talk about time for our bodies to digest the foods that we eat. Now, I've never really thought about how long it takes my body to digest my food. I just thought I eat, I feel full, I stop eating. A little bit later, I might get a little munchy. And I'll go get something and I'll eat it. Well, I've learned that what I'm doing is not healthy. What I'm doing is not good for me. Um, I am not helping my body digest. I am really fighting the digestion of my food. So this week, as I need to read our memory verse, she considers a field and buys it. Out of her earnings, she plants a vineyard. She sets about her work vigorously. Her arms are strong for her task. The passage from Psalm 143, 8 is, Let the morning bring me word of your unfailing love, for I have put my trust in you. Show me the way I should go, for to you I lift up my soul. Well, one of the things that we need to learn to do is if we want to be the Proverbs 31 woman whose arms are strong to the task and she works vigorously, to do that, our bodies need the, the required amount of rest and we also need to maintain a healthy weight. Now, we talked last week about making New Year's resolutions and a lot of the resolutions usually always is, I'm going to lose weight. We even talked about us drinking 64 ounces of water per day for a month to see how our bodies feel after. If we've lost weight, if our complexion looks better, if we just feel better all around. Well, I don't know how y'all did, but I didn't do that great this week. I started off good intentions, and we talked about good intentions, but I started off pretty good, but I started keeping my granddaughter this week, and I have a little two and a half year old running around, and it's so easy to use an excuse of I'm running after her, or I'm looking after her, or I can't do this because I need to sit and play with her. So I'm finding that excuses come very easily and that it is really hard for me to condition myself to do the things that I need to do. And I thought about it when I was getting ready for the show and I thought, Connie, you didn't do really well this week. You really didn't. And if I have challenged you to do better, then I am doing a disservice if I can't do better. How could I expect you to do better if I don't do better? So this week, this upcoming week, today, tomorrow, I have challenged myself, Connie, you've got to do better than you're doing. So now we talked about drinking the water, purifying our system. Now we need to learn how our food is digested properly. When we go to bed at night and we've just eaten, 
our body cannot digest the food properly. Our bodies need, our digestive systems needs about 12 hours of rest. So to aid in our digestion, we need to not eat three hours before we go to bed at night. We need to let our bodies stop eating, let our digestive process begin, go to bed, we get the required amount of rest, and then when we wake up, we will feel better. We will feel differently. The problem is we don't do that. I don't know about y'all, but I, I like a late night snack. And I don't know if y'all have done this before, but I have been in the bed and I have felt hungry. And I thought, you know what? I really need to get up and get something to eat. And in doing so, I get up, I eat something. Sometimes it's not much. Sometimes it's a cracker. Sometimes it is a sandwich. Sometimes it is a bowl of soup. But anyway, it's not what I need. What I am doing at night is, instead of helping my body, it is prohibiting my digestive system from working as well as it should. If we really want to feel well, we need to learn to stop eating before we go to bed. I have never thought about a food hangover before until I read this lesson. And this lesson, if you have been following us in the book, it is on page 97. And it said, we have food hangovers. I had never thought about a food hangover in my life. But because our bodies need the 12 hours to, for our digestive system to rest, if we don't give it that 12 hours, then we get up and we feel groggy. A lot of people say, well, I just thought this is how I feel in the morning, or I'm not a morning person. But that's not the case. It doesn't have to do with whether you're a morning person or not. It is because we have not allowed our bodies to digest the food properly and we wake up feeling bad. Also, it said that if we eat late, it stimulates an insulin production and insulin stimulates fat storage. Now, I don't know about the rest of y'all, but as a lady, as a woman, the last thing I want to do is do something that I know is going to make me gain weight. But yet, in reading this, I realize I have, this has been my life story. That when I'm hungry, I eat. Or when I think I'm hungry, I eat. Now, what was stated in the book is that if you give your body the time to rest, the time to relax, you can even aid in the, the digestive process by taking a leisurely stroll after you eat dinner. And I know a lot of us, we work outside the home. We have children that are have um, sports that they participate in. Or we have somewhere we have to go at night. And it's not always easy for us to eat dinner and go for a stroll. It's not always easy for us to eat dinner and wait three to four hours before going to bed. Sometimes we are so busy that we run home, we grab something to eat, we wait 15, 30 minutes, and we're ready for to go to bed. And when we do that, we are really harming our bodies because our digestive system does not work well while we are at rest. It needs us moving to help the digestive process alone along. So if we're eating and lying down after we eat, our body is struggling all night long to digest the food that we ate. So we're not going to get a really good night's sleep because we can't sleep if our body is struggling to digest what we've eaten. And I know a lot of this may not make a lot of sense. Um, as I was reading it, I thought, 
I never, I never understood the process. You know, we don't sit down and think about the process of our digestion. I do know if I eat late at night, sometimes I have to prop myself up on the pillow. But the doctor says, that's reflux. Well, it could also be that I have eaten too much or that I have eaten right before I go to bed and I'm laying down and my food has not digested. And that makes perfect sense. If I'm lying down on a full stomach and my body is trying to digest what I have just put into it, and it can't because I have just said, wait a minute, I'm going to slow the process down by lying down. So we have to realize that we sometimes are our own worst enemies. Sometimes the things that we do or don't do causes our own bodies to fight themselves. If we want to be healthy, if we want to be up to the task at hand, we need to let our food digest. We need to do everything we can to aid our bodies in what our their functions are. You know, a lot of times, and I've done this, I've eaten dinner and I'm okay. I'm sitting watching TV and a commercial comes out. I'm not even thinking about being hungry, but all of a sudden I want something to eat. And I go to the cabinet and I'm looking for something. Sometimes I get something, I sit down and eat it, and I'm thinking, this isn't what I wanted. So I get up and I look for something else. And I'm eating not because I'm hungry, it's because I saw something on TV. Or it's because I'm bored. It's because I really want something to do. So the easiest thing to do is put something in my mouth. So as I was reading this and going over that this, this week, I thought, how many times have I done that? How many times am I sitting there and I'm not hungry at all, but I just want something. And as I was reading this, it said that a lot of times you will to start off with when you're learning to watch what you eat. You will feel like, okay, I need to, I'm hungry. I need something to eat. But if you think about it, you think, I just ate just a couple hours ago. There's no way I can be hungry. So then you've got, real, you've got to think, am I hungry or am I just used to eating at this time of the night? A lot of times we confuse hunger with thirst. So maybe we just need to get up and drink some water. And then if that does not satisfy what is going on with us, then maybe what we're feeling is actually a craving or it's just a habit. If it's a craving, if it's something we really, really, really want. We need to try to, to subdue that for the night. And we can always say, you know, if I still want this in the morning, I can have it. And when I do, and when I wake up, it'll be okay because my body has digested what I had the night before. A lot of this is just learning self-discipline. And the more I read this book, the more I find out that I'm really not good at self-discipline. Instead of knowing that I have the authority to say, Connie, you don't need this right now. It is so easy for me to give in. So easy for me out of boredom, out of habit, out of lack of self-control just to give in and eat. And what happens is when I do this, I put more stress on my body. I'm not aiding my body and the functions of my body. Instead, I am hampering what my body should be doing. If we stop eating three to four hours before we go to bed, if we are fortunate enough and have the time to take an evening stroll after we eat dinner, when we do that, our bodies will process our food. It will make it easier. So when we lay down at night, our sleep is more peaceful. We get more rest. 
And when we wake up, we feel better. And as we learned last week of drinking the warm lemon water in the morning and at night, when we wake up the next morning and we drink our warm lemon water, it will flush out all the toxins and all the food that our bodies digested over the night, and we will feel better. We will have energy that we haven't had before because our bodies were able to function properly. So our affirmation this week is, I give my body time to digest. You know, if you think about those words, it's almost like, I don't understand. I give my body time to digest. We're giving our bodies time to digest the food that we put in our bodies. We are actually saying, okay, this is what I need to do. This is how I need to live. This is a lifestyle change that can only be for the better. You know, I thought drinking water, okay. No, drinking water has not come easy for me. Now, this, not eating three to four hours before I go to bed, I know this is not going to be an easy task for me. And a lot of it is not because I'm hungry. It's because it is a habit that I have become so used to eating when I want, what I want, that I have not disciplined myself to be able to do what I need to do. Now, as we talked about digesting our food and giving our bodies time to digest what we eat, I want to talk about digesting the Word of God. You know, I have heard most of my life that the Bible is the Word of God. But I never thought about digesting the Word of God. And as I was doing some research, I realized that a lot of times we may read the Bible. We may do some research and study for a short time. But do we actually let the Word of God get into our bodies? Do we actually digest His Word? Do we let it sink into our very being? Do we feed upon his word? You know, in the wilderness, the children of Israel, they cried out because they didn't have food to eat. They cried out because they missed the onions and the garlic and the leeks, everything from, from Egypt. And they even accused Moses of bringing them out into the desert to die. They would have chosen bondage over freedom just because they had what they wanted to eat but God heard their cries God knew that they needed to eat so he sent them manna he sent food from heaven to feed his children and you know even later on in the story even the food from heaven the manna that was sent to them they even had something to say about that. They were tired of eating the manna. They wanted meat. They wanted more than God had given them. So what did God do? God gave them quail. And he gave them so many quail that they made themselves sick. You know, a lot of times, spiritually, as well as physically. We don't appreciate what we have. We do not appreciate the opportunities that we have. These children had been in bondage, in captivity. They had been beaten. They had been treated less than human. But because they had food to eat, they would have traded every bit of that just for an onion, garlic, or a leek. We don't think about 
the price that God paid for us. We do not think about how fortunate we are. We always want a little more. And we're so ready for the physical food. You know, a baby starts off drinking formula. And then you add a little cereal. And then baby food. And then eventually they get to eat food from the table. And I don't know about most of you, but any mother has always tasted the baby food that their babies eat. It is not good, y'all. But when you're used to drinking milk and you actually have something that has some consistency to it, it is really good to you then. But then as you grow, you realize that I want something with a little more bite to it. I want something that I can chew on. So then we move on to table for finger foods or food from the table we are so ready to move on and to eat the meat physically we want more to eat we want something that has some substance to it but when it comes to the word of god how often do we settle for just drinking the milk we are not as anxious to get into the meat of God's word. We'll take the John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believed in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Yes, we'll, we'll take some of that. We'll take the easy scriptures. But anything that we've really got to think about. Anything that is telling us what we're doing is wrong anything that says you need to turn from your wicked ways you need to repent you need to come to me and surrender your heart you need to lay down all the things that are so displeasing to me you need to lay them down and turn away from them and start doing things that are, that pleases me Start doing my will and not your will. We have a problem with that. We have a problem with learning how to digest the word of God. Well, we have made it through a half hour. This is WUCC 99.9 .9, Williston, South Carolina. And I am so appreciative that you have decided to ride along with me today. On Proverbs 31 woman now I looked up some scriptures if I can get a hold of my papers here on digesting God's words and there were a lot of scriptures some I read and, and some I thought okay this is good but I wanted I picked out the ones that really spoke to my heart and a lot of times, as I said before, we've been told that the Word of God is our spiritual food. And we know that the Bible is the inspired Word of God. But a lot of times we read, we read God's Word and we're left feeling spiritually thirsty, hungry, dry, and even a deep emptiness inside of us. God gave us his word to be our spiritual food. We are not just to read his word, but we are to digest his word. Nothing is more important to our spiritual life than to be nourished by the word of God. I thought about this as I was studying in it, and it was talking about you can read something, but you just read it. You do research or you study something, but you just retain it for a short time. But God requires us to digest his word, to take it inside, to hide it in our hearts, to chew on his word, to think about it, to say, God, I, d I don't understand exactly what you're saying, but I need you to open my eyes. 
I need you to show me how to digest what you're saying to me. I long to feed on your word for your word to sustain me. That we don't need the milk any longer. We want the meat. We're ready for more and we crave more. We want all that God has for us. One of the scriptures that I found was John 6, 63. And it, it is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. The word that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. What this is telling us is that the word that God gives us is our life. It is our bread. It is what causes us to flourish. It nourishes us and it provides us with what we need to get through the day. Deuteronomy 8, 2 and 3. And thou shalt remember all the ways which the Lord thy God led thee forty years in the wilderness to humble thee and to prove thee, to know what is in thine heart whether thou would keep his commandments or no. And he humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger and led thee and fed thee with manna, which thou knowest not, neither did thy fathers know, that he might make thee know that man doth not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord doth man live. He was telling them that he was feeding them with something that they had never had before. In Egypt, they had certainly never had manna. Their forefathers had never seen manna. God brought them something new. They hungered and God gave them spiritual food. The manna was heavenly food. It wasn't something they made up in the camp. God delivered the manna to them every morning. It was new every morning. And he was teaching them that I am giving you something, but you need to realize that your life is not dependent just on the earthly food that you eat. It is not the bread that you make up, but it is the word, my living word that I give to you, the words that I say, the words that I am teaching you, that I am placing in your heart. That is where your nourishment comes from. That is your lifeline. That is what I give to you because you are my children and because I love you. In Jeremiah 3.15 And I will give you pastors according to mine heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. If you were fortunate enough to have a spirit-filled pastor, one that surrenders himself to God, that listens to God, that talks with God, that walks with God. God gives to the pastor what he needs to bring to the flock. Just like the shepherds, they always took their flock where the grass was green, where they could get, where they could get nourishment. They didn't take them back to the same place day after day, the ground that they had already grazed over. They didn't do that. They searched out new things to feed the flock. That is why God gave us pastors. He gave us teachers. He gave us apostles and evangelists. He gave us people that were truly seeking his own heart. That he fed them and they in turn fed us. So when our pastors are talking to us and they're explaining to us or they are revealing to us what God has been showing them, they are giving us new food, fresh food. We are getting a new course that day because God has given them knowledge that he 
intends for them to impart unto us. And that's not saying that we don't get the same impartation. But many of us need to learn. We start off as children. You know, when our children go to school, they don't immediately go to high school. They start off in kindergarten. Then it's first grade. Then they go on through middle school, high school, college, however they go. But they learn little by little. I don't think any of us comes knowing everything at one time. But that's why God gave us our pastors to feed the flock. And that is who we are in our church. Our pastor is our shepherd and we are the flock. And he gave to our pastors the ability to feed the flock. Isaiah 55, 1 through 3. Ho, everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters. And he that hath no money, come ye, buy and eat. Yea, come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Wherefore do you spend money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which satisfieth not? Hearken diligently unto me. And eat ye that which is good, and let your soul delight itself in fatness. Incline your ear, and come unto me. Hear, and your soul shall live. And I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of David. God, <clears throat> pardon me, God is so willing to feed us. He doesn't ask for us to bring money. He just asks for us to have a willing heart. There was a price paid for what he gave us. His son paid the ultimate price. But because of the price that his son paid for us, everything that, that God gives us is free. He feeds us. All we have to do is be willing to come to the table. He gives the invitation to come and dine. It is totally up to us whether we take up that invitation, whether we say, yes, Lord, I want to come and sup with you tonight. Or we say, no, I've got something else to do. I'm too busy. You know, how many times have you been too busy to stop and sup with the Lord? How many times have you had excuses that there were things you needed to do or places I need to go and I don't have time right now, but when I get a moment, I'll pick up your word, Lord, and I'll read it. When I get a moment, God, I will spend some time in prayer, but right now I'm kind of busy. How many times have we turned down the invitation that God has given us to come and dine? To just sit down and enjoy fellowship with him. You know, I always did not understand a lot of the scripture. I still have problems understanding some of the scriptures. But some of the things of he calling people to come and them telling him no, that they had something to do. And I thought, well, people do have things to do sometimes. Sometimes you can't go all the time to somewhere and do stuff. But I didn't understand the importance of the lesson. He was saying, I prepare my table for you. I call you to come and eat. I invited you first. But yet you were too busy to come. So... I'm going to invite someone else now because you didn't have time for me. And then I started to think, okay, well, that's a, that's a good thing. He, he, he's got all this food and he's prepared a, a place for, for people to eat. So if the ones he invited, if everybody can't come, that's a good thing that he invites other people. 
what I didn't understand is that he called us first and we turned him down. So now he's going to call other people to come and sit at our place setting. And it's not like he's going to say, okay, when you're through, you can come, you can come over and get dessert. Or when you have time, come over and fix you a plate and take it back with you. God's not saying that. God's saying, I offered you this food, but you were too busy to come. I offered you my fellowship. I offered you my love. I offered you everything that I had. I came to you first, but you were too busy for me. That does something to my heart. Because I'm thinking, God, how many times did you invite me? And how many times did I tell you no? How many times did you say, Connie, I really would like to spend some time with you. And I said, not now, Lord. I'm a little busy. But I'll get back with you later. This is what reading the Word of God, digesting the Word of God is about. Are you taking time to fill up on God's Word? Are you taking the time to sit back after you eat of His Word and just sit back and think on it and say, Lord, I read your Word and I don't understand everything that you're trying to tell me or you're showing me. But God, I want so much to understand it. So Lord, I'm just going to Sit back a little bit, and I'm going to let it digest in my spirit. I want to understand what you're saying. I want to understand everything that you are trying to bring to the table. I know it's there, but I haven't gotten there yet. But God, if you just keep on, if you just keep on showing me, God, keep on feeding me, God, I will get it because I want that. That is what God is asking of us. In John 6, 26 and 27, Jesus answered them and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Ye seek me, not because you saw the miracles, but because you did eat of the loaves and were filled. Labor not for the meat which perished, but for the meat which endureth unto everlasting life which the Son of Man must give unto you, for him hath God the Father sealed. Back when God, when Jesus performed the miracles on the mountain, and he took the two fishes and the five loaves, and he multiplied it, and he fed the thousands, he is saying here that you're not coming to see me because you, because you saw miracles, but you actually ate the loaves and the fishes that I gave you. You saw that miracle. You actually got filled with what I did. That you didn't have to labor for the meat or the bread, but that God, Jesus in his miraculous way he took that and he said don't worry about what we're going to feed them I will speak the word and they will have more than enough to eat and it happened but it only happened because Jesus was the son of God and it said for him hath God the father sealed God had given him all power to do the miracles that he did and he showed that to everyone that he was around he was a living example of everything that the father is he fed the multitudes he fed them with his word he taught them he instilled in them the truth so their spirits were being fed Everyone that walked with him were filled to capacity. 
John six forty eight and 51 said, I am the bread of life. Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. This is the bread which cometh down from heaven, that a man may eat thereof and not die. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I give for the life of the world. Jesus himself said that he is the bread of life. That what the fathers ate, the manna that came down, it was to feed them, to keep their bodies functioning. But that Jesus himself is the bread of life. It is more than earthly food. This is spiritual food. This is the nourishment for our souls, our bodies, and our minds. That the bread, the manna that the forefathers ate, they hungered again. But if we eat, if we digest the word of God, we will not hunger anymore. Because he will fill us. Because his flesh, he gave his flesh for us. He died for us. He sacrificed his very being so that we could live, so that we could have everlasting life. I think I have one more, which is Hebrews 5, 12 through 14. For when for the time ye sought to be teachers, you have need that one teach you again, which be the first principle of the oracles of God, and are, and are become such as have need of milk, and not of strong meat. For every one that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Jesus is telling us there that if we don't take the time to digest his word, if we don't take time to get in the word and spend time there, then we are just as babes. We're still on formula. We're still drinking the milk. We haven't even moved on to the baby food. We're stuck as a babe. And that's not, he, that's not what he wanted for us. He wants us to grow. He wants us to become full adults. He wants us to want the meat. He wants us to desire more than what we are eating. I don't know about the rest of you, but... I want everything God has for me. I don't want to stop at just the things that I see. You know, there are the fruits of the Spirit. There are, but I'm believing that there are more than just the nine. I am believing that every promise in the Bible is my promise. And I believe that there are more promises than, than the Bible even tells. If Jesus told his disciples that it was expedient for him to go to the Father because when he left and go and went to the Father that he would send a comforter and that his disciples would be able to do even more than Jesus did. Jesus turned the water into wine. He opened the eyes of the blind. He healed the leper. He caused the lame to walk, the deaf to hear, the mute to speak. He raised people from the dead. All that he has said is mine. He said I would do more than he did. All I have to do is believe in him. So what I can do, what you can do as children of God has not even been thought of yet. We think that praying sometimes for someone that is sick is 
huge and that oh if it's God's will people it is God's will for us to get better it is God's will for us to pray for the sick to be healed it's God's will when somebody falls over dead to say in the name of Jesus get up it is it is in our authority to claim every promise that God gave us that Jesus said I believe that I can do all things through Jesus Christ who strengthens me. I believe that I have not even begun to see the miracles that are going to take place. Because God is faithful. God cannot lie. The promises is yes and amen. And those are the promises he has given us. Jesus said you will do greater things than I have done. Can you only begin to imagine what is greater than what Jesus did. We are so blessed. We are able to read the word. We are able to feed on the word of God. And how many times do we just walk by it and don't even stop and think that is the living word of God. I need to feast on what God has for me. I need to learn everything God has for me. But yet, we're too busy. Yet, there's a TV program coming on. And if I have time after I get through, then I'll read it. People, it is time to get serious about God's Word. It is time to get serious about God, what God wants us to do. I just want to thank y'all for riding with me tonight. I want to thank you for being a part of the Proverbs 31 woman. And again, as I've said so many times before, we are not what we've done in our past, the things that we have gone through, the things that we have been a part of is you know we can't help that we can't help our past we're not defined by our past but we are defined by who we choose to be what we choose to do and it is important that we as children of God we step into what God has for us. I just want you to think about that. Think about how good God is. And that all we need to do is just surrender to Him. So I want to end this tonight with a prayer. Father, I just thank You. I thank You for who You are. I thank You, God, that You sent the Comforter. I thank you, God, that you said that I could do all things because you are my strength. Lord, I thank you for life. I thank you that your mercies are renewed every day. I thank you for your compassion and your mercy. And God, I say thank you. Thank you. Lord, I pray and speak life over each one of our listeners, God. Bring into their hearts your word god help them to understand and digest what you have for them and lord strengthen them make their hands strong for their task that they work vigorously for you god and that they give you praise honor and glory thank you so much for riding along with us i look forward to seeing you next week so for proverbs 31 woman this is connie and I will, I will see you later. Goodbye now.
Okay, everyone. Have a supernatural week. I'm looking forward to seeing you or speaking to you next week. Like I said, we're having just a tad bit of difficulty because I'm riding by myself. But next week, hopefully, we'll have Rachel back with us. But until then, have a blessed week. Bye now.